Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, my question was about the uh, Shadow Wars. I was just wondering, uh, would it make sense? The most important part, too. You were like, I would it make sense? And then I'm like, ah, dude. <laughs> Would it be purpose? I'll obey it. Okay. Would it make sense for in the Shadow Wars to have some people um, doing support roles for healing and whatnot? I know it's a DPS race to get the immortal down for the shadows, but does it make sense to have a few people maybe specking their gear to help healing and whatnot? Can you heal the immortal as well? Um well so the support battles, if you win them, they they give a damage buff to both the people that are fighting the immortal and the immortal himself. From, from what I've noticed yesterday. But, but can we give heal. you shields? Mm -mm, no. Okay. No, no, but I'm wondering like players themselves healing like the, for the team, you know, to keep the team up. Is it? Yeah, yeah. That... I hear you. Uh, so there are specific uh, there are specific builds that will like I don't think there's an actual healer though build in the game there there's like some gems there's some buffs like Crusader has a buff that they can throw right around like there's a few things like that like area buffs but I don't think there's an actual like build where you can heal I think I actually asked about that I asked Wyatt about that because I was wondering too like it would be cool if we're going like all the way straight up MMO I definitely should be a healer you should have a tank, a healer, you should have a DPS, like like you guys are talking about. But I don't know, is there really a healer in Immortal? Yeah, you could classify the monk as, you know, you can fully spec protective, proactive That's true. shielding. That's true. Yeah, so th th there are some builds that uh, I know the monk can allow, but I, I know there's also certain restrictions that, um, if my memory serves, that you had to be in a party. You know, so, you know, party members were protected, whether it was um, a shield buff or, you know, regain of health. So it, it, at most, if you had 30 people, I could only protect three people. Um, you know, if you did it on the other side of, well, you have an army of 10 monks, you know, and however else, you know, you could certainly, you know, break it down, um, break it down appropriately so that. Uh, maybe not 10 monks, but you know what I'm saying, where, you know, you have each monk protects three other people. Um, you certainly could theoretically build, you know, some sort of healer, but you're only going to get like 5% extra uh, HP on it anyway. Um, and, and again, there's also going to be certain restrictions about, you know, keeping the distance down if memory serves uh, as well. So it's one of those, you know, it would be nice, but you're not going to be doing, you know, heals or heal raids like they could in WoW, where, you know, you get the healer that stands in the background and is just casting spells all day. I think the, I, the idea is coming from the D3 monk for support. I would love to play that role if they had it. You know, that was a big question for Carnage yesterday, was should we all be in four-man groups so we can benefit from group buffs? Like from Necromancer and... A lot of min-maxing, and I like I, I definitely do take shield because I give you crowd control removal and like yeah. half your health bar as a shield for like six seconds. Yeah, absolutely should be grouped. Everybody should be grouped. And it's one of those, like, if you look at, you know, experience wise, most of the best gear that's out there, most of the best gems that are out there will encourage, you know, um, grouping up, whether it's, you know, Shadow Wars, running dungeons, you know, never mind restrictions on, you know, like the Hell 3, Hell 4 difficulties, Hell 2 difficulties like, to run dungeons. You really should be whenever possible, um, just because then you get the more experience rewards, chains and all that wonderful stuff. Um, you know, and I know that's especially with the you know formations of like the war bands uh, that just encourages it too. I actually came up to have a to ask a question that might answer your previous question, Giga, with the contracts. Yes, dungeon contracts. Has anyone noticed whether or not because uh, if we all get the same contracts per day for dungeons, do they reset daily? I'm not sure I was just so if we did the if we did contracts 
you know, today and I told you what my five contracts were or my current contracts were, would they match up with your contract choices for the day? Yeah, which would answer the question that Giga had. Because you would, you wouldn't oh, share it. They can be party shared. I mean, I don't even, the dungeons, uh, not the dungeons, the bounties aren't necessarily the same for everyone every day. Yeah, that, that one know, isn't, there, but the contracts there, might. Cool. I, I just know that because I do it in WoW a lot with having specific things like that be just shared be, by everyone just having the same thing. I guess it would be random from the pool. What I think might be cool, though, um, and this might be like a, hey, takeaway, maybe it's something that Wyatt and team are already working on, is, you know, what if we had, um, like, a clan or dark clan contract? You know, and I know, you know, WoW and other ones have, have done this where it's like, okay, there's this quest, but it requires four people to do. You know, like flat out, straight out, that's what it is. You know, it's a four man quest or four person quest. You know, what if you know they did that where the Dark Clan had to come together? You know, maybe it was a house focus type deal or, you know, whatever, um, where either we had to take on LaSalle or, you know, we had to take on some raid boss, uh, you know, as a as a quest, as an activity. Um, I, mean, I, I wonder if that's I had a question for you guys. Like, I wanted to kind of get your guys' opinion on how you guys feel about the caps for things like blacksmith ranking, as well as like the enchanted dust from curse chest and side quests, and all that stuff being capped at like give or take five a day, and then they don't give you enchanted dust anymore. I can, but what I said earlier about Blizzard's philosophy and MMOs kind of relates to that. They just, they like the time gates so you don't get blow through their content. Well, on, the, Catch on the other side, too, is you can also, you know, um, turn in, you know, uh, scrap metals for some of that stuff, too. Like th that, that again, it has improved, um, you know, from alpha to beta to where we are now. Um, I remember playing alpha where it was just like, I am starved. For enchanted dust there's no other word for it like i just can't get enough of the enchanted dust no matter how i do my pickups and, and scratch and uh salvage like i never had enough to level up anything um in alpha and then in beta it was much better um, it was still low but at least you weren't starved for it um now you know it, it, it's kind of the same from beta to release where um you know you're i'm not starved i'm not you know, dying for it. But as soon as I get enough to hit the next level, there's that little red dot that I run back to the, the blacksmith. Um, it actually is arguably better. Um, but I think it's one of those, you know, and you can play with it as they, they want to time gate it, but then they also want you to collectively, they don't want people to run away with, um, you know, max level gear, uh, you know, arguably um, as far as, you know, being able to take something all the way up to level 10 within the first day of, you know, playing. And now I'm, you know, Paragon 1 and I have this ungodly piece of equipment because, you know, I just bought or, you know, salvaged or, you know, went to the antiques dealer and just bought everything for gold, you know, and, and then salvaged it all just to to get better slots. You know, like they, they long term, that's not the, the best investment, um, you know, for play. Maybe because they want you to, you know, I'll agree with you that they want to control the, the long term spending. They don't want you to, to buy everything right away, because uh, ultimately, if, you know, you have a bunch of whales, you know, running around, we all know that, you know, a mobile game is just going to tank uh, servers go downhill. Um, but on the other side, you know, th then you get you're going to hold back the people that are legit grinding, you know, um, that are actually you know putting in the time to to be the best of the best, you know, and they end up getting penalized. Um, so it becomes that that walk that they have to have. Yeah, because I mean, the, the every the one rank per 10 Paragon levels is feel like a little slow because the fact that every time <laughs> I've just immediately ranked everything up is like, I don't know. I, there's not a much of a gradual progression when all I'm doing is building it up for when I eventually hit the next Paragon tier. 
for the, the next 10. Whereas like, I guess in beta, there was more of a strategy of like, you know, get everything to six first and then get it to 11 for the next bonus. Whereas now it's just, hey, you're going to be here for a while. So might as well just put everything up to the next rank. Hmm. Yep. I'm going to yep. blow your guys' Agreed. minds real quick. So who's in the game right now? It sound right Me. Okay. <laughs> Click just above your experience bar in the top left. Just kind of spam click down there. The game has a clock in it. Like the server time, local time? Server time, local time, yeah. Yeah, it shows 24-7 on it, on my screen. So it only is on mobile. Anybody on PC uh, gotcha. cannot see what time the server is running. Uh, let's see. Um, just kind of throw it in there because I know um, Rob had a question and then I, I'm going to take this down at the top of the hour. Um, so we got five minutes left, but uh, Rob asked the question. Um, and I think this could be a good one for a little discussion with the people up here. Uh, what do content creators, what do players think uh, about dungeons being enterable by solos, especially at those higher levels? So again, the normal difficulty, anyone can go into a dungeon and do any level. Um, what are some of our uh, thoughts about, you know, the hell, hell one requires two people, hell two, three, four, and so on. I'm assuming I haven't gotten there. Uh, they, they still have that four person requirement to do dungeons. Um, what's kind of thoughts on that one? You know, the pros and the cons about it. I'm good with the two person requirement because it's not hard to get just one other person and it encourages that, you know, the group gameplay. The four people is probably going to be tough at first for those that first get to those tiers because not many other people will be there. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't reached the four clan. requirement yet. It certainly limits when you can do that content because not everybody's available at all times of the day. So it sort of restricts that content to be at certain times of the day when there are more people available. Yeah. Which no. I'm not a big fan of. Especially when it's like, no, but this is a, I made a comment to Nemo earlier today about something else. And it's like, you know, it, it's a balance because, you know, one part of this is, but it's a mobile game and mobile games are convenient. Mobile games are something that I can jump in and out of, you know, at whim. Um, but this isn't a mobile game. It's a game, it's a triple A game you play on mobile, uh, which means that, that something like the Shadow Wars of, you know, what we were talking about, you know, where you have to be on for this 30 minute window, you know, in order to participate. Um, it's not a mobile game mantra, which is really kind of, you know, odd, different, you know, um, and, and I think that's something that you know, needs to, needs to be at least balanced when uh, you're an individual playing anyway. You know, am I a casual mobile game gamer or am I, a, you know, a triple A Diablo gamer? Um, I think that just becomes, you know, again, something you need to figure out. You know, so I have a lot to say about that, and I actually don't understand why that requirement is still there, because I was I'm just gonna keep saying it because I know I keep complaining, but I was one of the first ones to complain about this because it wasn't the case at first, right? You could just run whatever dungeon you want at whatever difficulty you want. And back in the day, if you wanted to go into an H3 dungeon that had a, you know, a, not a requirement, but a suggestion of four people, and but you were a big boss and you wanted to do it, you could, you could do it. But now, you know, then they changed that and it really like restricted a lot of times the way, the way we played. So back in the day too, there used to be certain bounties that would hold you back, right? You can't, and besides just having that with those ornate chests where you need four people, now you need them for bounties, you need them for, you know, for, um, for hidden layers, for a bunch of other stuff. So like I'm running around and doing my thing, running my routes and I see a hidden layer, I can't enter it. And it's gonna like break down my flow. Now I gotta stop, wait for someone to get in. I, you know, I'm all for like having group play, but I wasn't for like stopping solo play just because you want everyone to do a group play. I said exactly that to them. And they actually listened. They said we're changing that. They, they they literally told me that that is going to get dropped and it still hasn't dropped yet. So when I got the oh, game, I, I was really surprised. That's not supposed I to know that they, they did say about like the bounties that you weren't going to get bounties where you had to run into a dungeon. You know, um, I, I haven't seen that what, at any rate. I, what, they, 
they, I'm gonna find it. I don't know where it is. I'm not sure if it was privately to me or publicly, but I'm telling you, they stated that they're going to get rid of the um, the requirement for Hell One dungeons to have two people. Like I think the requirement would only be for like when you get to Hell something for the four people. That's what they told me, and they still haven't said they haven't done that. So I'm not sure. I know what's the, up. the other thing that your comment uh, reminded me of that it bugged me in beta because I could do, I could try to do this in alpha. And, I, and since it's still the case with hidden layers, you know, I'm not going to be able to re easily do in product in release. Um, it, it gets me is in the codex, you know, as people might have realized that one of the last pages is the achievements page. Um, and in each of the zones, you know, there is a checkbox that, and rewards if I beat a, a boss, if I get visit 100 percent of the map, um, you know, if I find the five. Uh, barbarian spirits and try to talk to them if I you know th there's all these little things there's also one in every zone that pertains to the hidden layers um, whether it's jumping in finding like uh, opening up catacombs or um, finding some spawn point that, that was in there um, if you're a completionist and you want to 100% your codex you're gonna have to do these which means you have to get into hidden layers um, and the, the way that I've seen hidden layers so far, in my experience, if I find one in Frozen Tundra and I want to jump into that, because that's the, the last one I need for my 100%, we'll say. I got to go as a party, so I hit find party. And by the time I get a party for a hidden layer, it's actually not one in Frozen Tundra that would get me the reward I want. It's actually, you know, <laughs> in the cemetery. Pain is real. Doing that right you know? now. <laughs> And it's one of those I remember seeing that, for 10 minutes. Yeah, in seeing that in beta, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, now, of course, how do you fix that? Well, 